Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to a super old video. This has been uploaded 13 years ago by the Islamic Informant. The video title is Old Bible Proofs Quran is Right. I know nowadays we have those absolutely amazingly produced Islamic motivational videos of which Hollywood is getting jealous. But nevertheless, in those old videos, sometimes we find true gems. With no further ado, let's have a look. The letters of Jesus' brothers were so dangerous that for hundreds of years, the church fathers refused to include them in the Bible. They were only finally accepted because the oral traditions concerning Jesus' family were so strong. There were... Yeah, it's quite interesting because if you look into Christianity, you would have to rely upon the church fathers. There is a thing called canonization. It means that those scriptures are acceptable, that those scriptures are legit and real, similar to the Sahih process of the Hadith. However, it is up to those church fathers to decide if the scriptures are legit or not. Therefore, we would have to put our faith into the church fathers and accept them as authorities. Some people can do that. I personally cannot. I do not know those church fathers personally and I've seen what has happened at the Nicene Council and therefore I personally cannot put my trust in them. Some Christian leaders who said, well, James, I don't know if we should include him. Now, he's the brother of Jesus. Why wouldn't you want his letter? Because if you what? read the letter... It doesn't have the gospel that people came to associate with Christianity. In complete contrast to today's Christianity, the letters of Jesus' brothers describe him as their master but not divine. They see Jesus as a human character blessed by God. The thing about the book of James, sense. it's the teachings of Jesus but not the teachings about Jesus. James passes on what he got from his brother. You could say it has no theology. The seventh stage. And yet it does have a theology, but it's the theology of Jesus. But it's no theology about Jesus in that book doesn't mention right. the cross of Christ. And this is something that I learned while studying Buddhism. I learned about the teachings of the Buddha, but then ultimately had to realize that Buddhism, as the word describes, Buddhism is the teaching about the Buddha. And the same applied to Christianity. Was it truly about the teachings of Christ? Sure, partially, but predominantly it was about the teachings about Christ, who Christ was according to the church fathers. Yet, again this doesn't mention the blood of jesus doesn't mention forgiving sins through believing in the lord our savior who's in heaven nothing like that Interesting it's an amazing man. book to read this alternative version of jesus's message can be found in other texts too in the greek quarter of the old city of jerusalem there is another ancient book that was not included in the bible it's one of the most contested of early Christian documents, possibly even older than the Gospels themselves. I believe it is the key to understanding Jesus' original message. I'm very sorry that the library is not in its proper situation. The Library of the Greek Patriarch has the only complete copy of an ancient handbook specially written for wow. converts to Christianity that was compiled when Jesus' family was still alive. The Didache gives a direct insight into what the very earliest Christians thought and did. So this is absolutely amazing if it is true. The priest claims that this here is from the time of Jesus, from the time of the family of Jesus. It would be of course very interesting to see if we have some carbon dating for this document because I never heard about it. It has never before been filmed. Can I hold it? Yes. Wow. This is like being close to the early church. Of course. Wow. Yeah. And, and um, you, I'm not using gloves, is that okay? It's okay. It's I'm okay. not using the sword. Wow. wow. The book begins here. 
Oh, really? This book is 2,000 years old. I'm skeptical because it is so well preserved. There are two ways, one of the life and one of the death. The Didache, or teaching, contains a code of Christian ethics based on the original teachings of Jesus and some instructions as to the proper forms of worship. Which language is this in? There is a great difference between the two ways. Greek, huh? But what makes it so dangerous for today's Christianity is what it leaves out. There is no mention of the virgin birth, no mention of the resurrection, and above all, no mention of Jesus as God. They talk of Jesus in here as Lord and not Lord God, suggesting that they saw him as being more human than divine. How does that strike you? In my opinion, in the evangelists, in the gospels, and in the works of apostles, uh, there is a balance uh, between the uh, presentation of uh, Christ as the Son of God and as the Son of Man. The Lord to whom we believe is uh, divine, but he is human. Alright, so ultimately I do not know what's in those scriptures, but the Orthodox priest gave us the Orthodox version, of course. He said that there is a balance. With that, he wants to tell us that Jesus is equally man as he is God. 100% man, 100% God. Fully man, fully God. This is the Orthodox doctrine, of course. For 2,000 years, he has the Church right here, has grappled with the balance between Jesus' divine and human natures. But it is the divine that has dominated. In the process, it is Jesus' essential humanity and the humanity of his teaching. Now it's not only that it has dominated, yet again, as I said, this balance that they're speaking about is literally that Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. That is the balance that they're speaking about. Things ...that has been lost. Yes. The Didache also contains a detailed description of a very early communion service. Unlike today, there is no suggestion that the bread and wine are the body and blood of Christ. In fact, Jesus is referred to not as God's son, but his servant. And concerning his the servant and the son of man. Broken bread. We yeah. thank you, our Father, for the life and knowledge which you made known to us through Jesus, your servant. To you belongs the glory forever. Do you think that one of the reasons it's so obvious why they once don't mention it. Jesus as Lord God and they don't mention the resurrection was because they didn't believe that those events had taken place, that Jesus wasn't the Son of God and that Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, but instead he was a human, a prophet and not divine. It's a dangerous question. In my opinion, uh, the fact of the re resurrection of Christ uh, couldn't and shouldn't be ignored. Uh, Paul speaks and says, if Christ uh, was not resurrected, then we shall be accused that we, uh, we speak falsely against God. Exactly. So now the priest is taking his worldview from Paul. Even though he has presented evidence previously to Paul, he's ignoring that evidence. Even though he himself said that this is from the time of Jesus. Nevertheless, he listens to Paul. And this is what indoctrination is. If you look into the Orthodox Church, as I said, you would have to obey the Church Fathers. You would have to obey Paul. And Paul says, Jesus is God. You can eat pork. Congratulations. Now you can. That does make sense. What now. is absolutely fundamental to all Christians, including myself, is the idea that Jesus is God. Without that, there is no Christianity. Uh, what is now there is Unitarian Christianity as well. Clear is that the very earliest Jewish Christians, including Jesus' own family, did not see him as God. And ultimately, that is why the church has gone so far to delete them from the Christian story. Heretics. Heretics. This is Judas, uh, the brother of the Lord according to the flesh. Jude. Jude, yeah, who has written in In the Bible, in the letter of Jesus' younger brother Jude, there is an extraordinary passage denouncing a group of people who are secretly corrupting the true faith. For admission has been secretly gained. 
by some who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly persons who pervert the grace of our God. If you decode mm -hmm. it, it becomes a clear warning that the new movement was losing sight of Jesus' original message. By the time Jude writes, he could see the writing on the wall. He could see we're losing out. And it's a battle cry. It's a call to arms, spiritually speaking. He's not talking about outsiders. He's talking about people who claim to be part of us that are not teaching what we were originally handed down. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loudmouth boasters, flattering people to gain advantage. And he's getting very worried. And he's telling the little group that would still listen to him. I think in effect he's saying, don't listen to all these new things that are coming along. You fight hard for that original faith that was delivered to us. Family tradition. Follow the tradition of the family. Almost a mute testimony to what used to be the way. When Constantine the Great made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire 1600 years ago, it was Paul's interpretation of Jesus' message that yep. was adopted. And Paul based his authority on a series of mystical visions, although he had never met Jesus and only joined the movement after his death. They get it, they get By it. By contrast, James and the rest of the family who had grown up with Jesus followed his mission and being at his death, their version of Christianity, a vision of Jesus as a more human character, was declared heresy. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely amazing to see that this was produced by Christians, apparently, and not by an Islamic production company. Because when people watch Islamic productions, they, of course, think that they are biased. But hey, how about the Christians doing their own research here? Ultimately, they come to the same conclusion. It was Paul. Paul with his visions about eating whatever he likes and about abandoning the law. And, of course, making Christ into God. Yet again, as I described throughout this video, I saw this within Buddhism, but I failed to recognize back then that the same has been done in Christianity. If you look at Buddha and his teaching, he was a humble man that was going his own way. He didn't want to have followers to begin with, nor did he want to have any type of statues. But now you look around in Thailand and Southeast Asia, and you will see those huge golden Buddha statues. His his true message is forgotten and it became all about the worship of the Buddha. The same applies, of course, to Christianity. If you look at Jesus, what is his true message? Why don't we listen to him when he says, Israel, your Lord is one. When he says, the Father is greater than I. No, we're not listening to it. We are simply worshiping Jesus. We are praying to Jesus even. It is absolutely unbelievable what has happened, but at the same time, not so much because it is human nature to worship everything they can see. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. If you want to support this channel via Patreon, guys, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, and as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.